third enemy we have is the flesh. It says, now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I, as I have also told you in the time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. As you know, the flesh is pretty wicked. And you have to be careful with the flesh because the flesh wants to do bad things. And you got to control the flesh. And it, sometimes it may be hard, but fortunately we have the Bible. And the Bible does tell us how to live our lives. So what are we supposed to do? We have our enemies. Not only that, um, sometimes other Christians can be our enemies. So you got to be careful uh, who you talk to and what you listen to. So what are you supposed to do? Um, you got your three big enemies. you got the devil, the world, and of course yourself or the flesh. And those are, that's a lot of enemies if you think about it. So what are you supposed to do? Well, for one, there's when you're saved, People used, uh, I used to think that, you know what, when I get saved, life is going to be so much easier. But that's, that's not true, is it? When you get saved, you get your enemies, not only that, but um, life doesn't become a bed of roses. It gets harder. But fortunately, uh, God said that he will never leave us nor forsake us. And Jesus, in uh, John chapter 15, uh, verse 18 and 19, uh, please go there. Jesus tells us to expect trials and tribulations in life. Uh, trials will come. It, it's pretty much guaranteed. So don't be surprised if they do come. Uh, John chapter 15, verse 18 and 19. Here's what it says. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were off the world... The world would love his own. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. And in, uh, on the same, in the same book in John chapter 16, verse 33, here's what it says. These things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulations. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Uh, Jesus says that um, we're going to have trials, we're going to have tribulations. But be of good cheer because God has overcome the world. And when you become a child of God, He'll protect you. And um, you'll be okay. Also in uh, James chapter 1 verse 2 it says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation. It doesn't say if, it says when. So... Might as well expect the tribulations, expect the trials, because they will come. It's pretty much guaranteed. That's part of life. But what do you do? Well, for one, you continue on in James chapter 1, verse uh, 3 to 5. I'm just going to look there so I don't misquote this. It says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall, fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. Now, because trials come, you're supposed to ask God for wisdom and how to, how to handle the trial. You ask God, God, what would you have me do? Like, give me wisdom to, uh, to overcome this trial. But you know what? Trials are good. If you look in uh, Romans chapter 5, it talks about trials. Uh, go to Romans chapter 5. Look at uh, verses 1 through 5. talks about how trials trials do help us it says Romans chapter 5 verses 1 through 5 therefore being justified by faith 
we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of, glory, of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope, and hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. So, don't be, don't be discouraged if trials come. Here it says, you know, we're supposed to glory in tribulations because it brings all these things. It brings patience, brings experience, and then hope. And when you, when you get through a small trial, you'll be better equipped to go through the next trial because you've, you've had your experience as far as how to handle the trial. You know, you ask God for wisdom and also you're thankful for it because uh, God's helped you in the past, in your past uh, trial or tribulation. So you ask God for wisdom, you expect trials. And also you remember that God has all the answers in life. You find that in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. It says, uh, According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. See, God's given us this Bible. It's given us basically solution to life. Uh, somebody once told me that uh, the Bible, it stands for basic instructions before leaving earth. I thought it was pretty good, but the Bible gives us answers on how to live life, how to have victory over sin, and basically how to uh, face trials, temptations. So when you realize that your, your enemies are, are numerous, remember you got the devil, you got the world, you got your own flesh, what else are you supposed to do? You remember in 2 Corinthians, how Paul, he asked God for, to remove the, uh, the thorn in his flesh. God reminds him in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, that his, his grace is sufficient for thee. Well, let me read it to you. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in, infir in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. God's grace is enough for us to go through our trials. It's enough for us to go through life. God is mighty and He's able to help us. So what else can we do? Well, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. Whenever you have trouble, you go there, among other things. Uh, if you want, you can go there. Uh, I'll open it up because I don't want to mess it up. It says, Let us therefore come boldly into the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Sometimes we try to do things our way, but a lot of times we will fail. So instead of failing in the first place, why not go to God in the first place and never fail? I think that's a pretty good solution. A lot of times we, we try this uh, method of trial and error, you know. We try, try, and we keep failing, we keep failing. And sometimes we, we put God as last option, right? All right, I can't do this anymore, so I, I'm going to go to God. Uh, it, it should be the other way around. You, you go to God first, which when you do go to God, He gives you enough strength. He gives you enough solutions to uh, face the problem, to overcome the problem, and to get through it. Apologize for that. Um, now, um, what about our enemies? What about the world, the devil, and the flesh? How do we combat? How do we fight against those? Go to uh, 1 John chapter 2. This is the solution against the world. Uh, it's, pretty, it's a pretty common verse that uh, most Christians uh, know. To fight against the world is what we're supposed to do. 
1 John chapter 2, verse 15 through 17.